It is early February of 2007. Sri Chinmoy and some of his students are visiting Chiang Mai, Thailand. While there, a series of races takes place on a 400 meter track. From his very early years, running has been his favorite sport. As a young man in India, he was a sprint champion of his ashram for 16 consecutive years. So a running track has always been a special place. Now at 75, however, the injuries to his legs are so great, it makes even walking for him extremely painful. And yet, he cannot resist the opportunity to compete with himself once again. Over several days and visits to the track, he will time himself over 400 meters. On each occasion, he is faster than the previous time. He once wrote, God's philosophy is simpler than the simplest. Never give up. Never give up. Only a student can learn. If I remain a student of peace, I'll be the happiest and the proudest person. Student, only a student can learn. So, it is just why I'm a student of peace. If people call me student of peace, I'll be extremely, extremely grateful to them. Peace is a subject. It is inexhaustible. There's no limit. See if I can be a student of peace, then I shall be able to learn, I shall be able to learn. And I shall be able to enter into each heart and see how most sincere cry each individual has in his heart. Peace is not a dictionary word. Peace is the heart breath of God. God will never be satisfied unless and until his hard breath he can share with his entire creation. At the age of 12, I came to a spiritual institute, we call it an ashram, and my master was Sri Aurobindo. I practiced meditation every day, at least for eight hours, plus I joined physical activities, we call athletics. I happened to be an excellent sprinter and thrower and so forth. By the grace of God, I found there was no barrier between spirituality and athletics, physical activities. They go side by side. The inner life and the outer life can easily go together. We will never know why Sri Chinmoy the sprinter became Sri Chinmoy the marathon runner. We do know, however, when this happened. On June 1, 1978, at San Francisco's Golden Gate Park, shortly after planting a peace tree there, he publicly embarked on his distance running adventure, at the same time encouraging his students not just to run as well, but also to test themselves to the fullest and to come each year to New York and run the marathon. But, but please do forget it. If you have to make a choice, all that's first and foremost, not talk to you. But did it can manage to come or not is material, but that is the utmost importance is in practice. 
Okay. Just filming the cell. I'm showing you the yes, physical world, but also in your spiritual world. It will help you tremendously. And the rest you can start with one mile, two miles, three miles like that. On the cusp of his 47th birthday, his distance running career began. By the end of his first year, he had run two 10-mile races and a seven-mile race. His dedication to training and transcending himself was unprecedented when you consider that his output in all the other areas of his manifestation, music, art, and literature, did not decrease even one iota. The hours he spent training and the miles a week he covered are now legendary. Several times he completed at least 100 miles in a week. He never, however, expected others to try and match his capacity. They instead should find their own. Of training, he said, when you practice you and your aspiration, you and your dedication, you and your eagerness to increase your capacities work together for your improvement and perfection. And from improvement and perfection, you are bound to get satisfaction. Both in his life and in his philosophy, he did not believe that one should ever surrender to age. And though he ultimately no longer continued distance running, he found new expression in other sports. But my philosophy is to remain children as long as you can. So I am involved in many, many things because I feel that inside my heart garden there are many, many, many beautiful flowers. And each flower has a beauty of its own and special fragrance. So I try to appreciate, admire, adore the beauty of one of my heart flowers and at the same time treasure the fragrance of that particular flower inside my heart garden. every week to run on practice marathon with the help of my regular road crew. In the eight years that Sri Chinmoy trained intensely, a team of boys measured and marked his running routes nearly every night. These distances ranged up to 20 miles and scattered in every direction from his home in Queens. Some of those marks can still be found on the roads today. 85th Drive and 150th Street is where Guru would come literally every day during his running career and start his run or his walk. And for Guru, it was the starting point for almost every one of his courses. It wasn't usual that, that Guru would ask us to come running with him, but it could be once a week, it could be three or four times a month, and Guru said he would come somewhere between one and two usually, a.m. And a lot of times um, we would fall asleep in the car and there'd be three or four of us from the road crew, and we all would be, we'd be waiting, and we'd, after about a half an hour, we'd, we'd, we'd doze off. And Guru would almost sometimes say jokingly, uh, I'll wake you up, or, you know, you people stay awake, or something like that. And then if we would all be asleep, Guru would tap on the, uh, on our uh, front of our car, on the hood of the car, and wake us up. And then Guru said, oi, oi, I'm going, I'm leaving now, I'm going. Well, there's three things. Time, distance, and stride length. And Guru was, uh, you know, he was so dedicated to bettering his time, to increasing his distance, and to enlarging his stride. All the time, especially when Guru was alone, not so much when he was with us, but when he was alone, he would have these incredible interactions with normal people, ordinary people, and it was um, really sort of the depth of Guru's humility, how much he um, cared about the world, I did have the opportunity to meet him many times. I, I would be out at, say, the five mile mark and I'd catch a glimpse and I'd say, is that Guru? And, and then you say, it is. And you, you, you just got so much joy because you were following in his footsteps. 
he'd run that way, you were on the same course as him, and he was five to ten miles out, and maybe he was on the turnaround coming back. But Guru looked great. He looked, he just looked fit. He looked like he was enjoying it. He was just in another world. His philosophy of self-transcendence, he was the great example of it. He always wanted to go beyond anything he'd done. So the stopwatches were out, there was a crew with it. So he, he just was wanting to to do great marathon times, you, just as exa his, his own example of running his first marathon. And then the next one was three weeks later and he, he just went so much under his first time. So Guru was a lover of running and a perfectionist of time and he just wanted to, to get faster. One way to do it was to get onto 150th Street. The harder you ran this hill, the stronger Guru became, and he knew that. But 150th Street here, and the top of this crest of this hill, running from the, down there up to the top of this hill, was his passion to go faster and faster. In his eight years of distance running, he competed in more than 200 events. Of those races, 22 were the 26-mile marathon, and twice he competed in his own 47-mile race. This uh, running that we hold has a very special place in our manifestation, and this manifestation is nothing short of our aspiration. So even those who do not do or cannot do should pay considerable interest in our aspiration in our efforts, which is self-giving to the Supreme. So, especially our races, where we run, where I run and the disciples run, that is absolutely necessary in our life of dedication. His vision of sport and the inspiration it offers both inwardly and outwardly continues. His legacy lives on in his World Harmony Run, which he created in 1987. Each year, Torch Relay Run teams seek out new pathways here and there around the world to spread its message of peace. Of its purpose, he said, it is serving the world community so that it can become a oneness heart home. Because Sri Chimoy felt it was important that all people engaged in sports should try and transcend themselves, the Sri Chinmoy Marathon team puts on races around the world. The events range from track and field competition right up to the longest certified road race in the world, the Self-Transcendence 3100 mile race. All are encouraged to come and run the marathon held in his honor each August in New York City. We know that there is a starting point. We know that there is a goal in our inner life. Aspiration is our starting point, and realization is our first goal. And the last goal is a manifestation of the supreme reality on earth. In the outer life, our starting point is the acceptance of light, the first goal is to feel that we are God's chosen children. And then our ultimate goal in the outer life we reach when we are fully prepared to fulfill God in His own way. Tomorrow's disciple will be the fastest spiritual runner. His code of life will be to run and become and become and run. He'll run 
in order to succeed he will become in order to proceed at times he will run and reach the goal at times the goal will come to him when he reaches the goal he will be blessed with the transcendental pride of the absolute supreme and when the goal reaches him he will immediately sit at the feet of the absolute supreme with his heart's soulful gratitude see